best way to start these uh, just with a little bit of tunes. Welcome everyone to the third workshop of this series. Um, today we're going to be talking about virtual events and um, not just because, you know, they're an alternative for in-person events. They're also the impetus for new ways of reaching audiences across geographical barriers and improving engagement, right, with our existing audience. Um, those who understand how to leverage virtual events can multiply attendance, they can grow their brand and revenue and ROI in, in so many ways. Um, but also given that it's a digital channel, um, the virtual event space can be or feel pretty saturated and you are all looking to drive key outcomes from these events from lead generation to creating opportunities to closing deals quicker um, to driving customer engagement and rapport building. Uh, there's so many ways that Postal can partner with you to stand out in your virtual event strategy and, and crush those KPIs. Um, and my goal today is just to help you walk away with one or two tangible offline tactics to add to your playbook um, to hopefully implement as quickly as possible. My name is Katie Castillo. I am the global campaign strategist here at Postal. Um, I came from fundraising major gifts at a national nonprofit and pivoted into tech and sales development. And now my sole job is helping you think more strategically about leveraging offline as part of your marketing strategies. Um, my time is included in your postal partnership, so I can help you build as many campaigns as you want. Uh, use me as a resource. And um, fun fact about me, this is what inspired the song choice, Born to Run, today. Uh, before this year, I'd never ran in any consistent way in my life. But I am running my first ever marathon this weekend. Um, I'm curious if anyone else has run a marathon. If you have, drop it in the chat um, and let me know your best advice to help me get through this. I've only ever run 16 miles, um, but we are we're going for it. My husband is an ultra runner, so he's been my coach and pretty proud of myself so far, but we'll see how it goes. Um, another fun fact. Like Taylor Swift, the queen, I like Easter eggs. So I'm gonna be hiding some postal giveaways throughout these slides. So be on the lookout for QR codes. The first people to snag them will get them. Um, I think there's like four or five different gifts throughout these slides. So be on the lookout, drop in the chat when you find one. Um, typically we see mostly US folks at these workshops so far, but I did hide a Canadian one because I know there are some Canadians here too. Um, all right, so quick agenda, few questions just to understand where you guys are coming from today. Um, and then I'll be talking about some offline strategies for virtual events, driving attendance, um, engagement during events, and then the follow-up after. And then we will be talking through um, a case study with Hillary from Big Health, just featuring her and, and what she's done. Uh, she's waving to everyone. Thank you, Hillary, for, for being here today. Um, we'll be, I'll talk through just kind of their playbook and open it up to her if she has anything to add. Um, and then we'll just talk through a couple of key takeaways for you um, that I hope you take from this, this event. Okay, first question. Let me put up my, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Chris, well, we'll just do it in the chat. I'm curious, are you using any direct mail or gifts as part of your virt virtual event strategy today? So maybe drop in the chat if you are um, and you're seeing success. If you aren't, I'm going to pull up my chat just so I can see where you guys are at too. Um, not currently going to, not currently. So this could be, you know, before an event to incentivize people to attend. It could be during an event, it could be after an event as kind of that next step. Um, so it looks like kind of in the middle sometimes. Cool. Okay. And then second question, how, if at all, has your team leveraged Postal's virtual events today? Um, so maybe it's internal only, maybe it's, you know, top of the funnel with prospects during active deals to drive, you know, prospects down the funnel quicker, close deals. Uh, maybe it's more with customers, not at all. 
Top of the funnel quite a bit, of course. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Dying to love that. We're going to talk about lots. Oh, good, Carrie. I'm excited to hear your plans. Okay. Fun. <laughs> Internal and webinars. Cool. All righty. Jake. Jake Miller. I, I know your friend Dave Wheeler pretty well. He's one of my mentors. He talks about you all the time as a postal flyer. So we're going to have to chat sometime. You do tell him I say hi. He's, okay. He's <laughs> we'll do. Um, okay, cool. We'll dive into, into the meat of this here. Um, so we'll talk about using offline incentives to drive registration, attendance, engagement, and then some follow-up strategies as well. So when we think about driving registration and attendance, there are a couple of plays that come to mind. Uh, the most affordable option, right, that screams exclu exclusivity is a branded handwritten invite. Um, we actually have a vendor within Postal, the Postal ecosystem um, on the marketplace, and then we've done paper plane projects with them as well, um, named Handwritten by Kiki. And you can set up a custom campaign through paper plane where you're doing a, a virtual event invite. Um, you might have a QR code on there, and then we can actually handwrite a personal note to invite folks to those events. Very few things stand out in someone's mailbox in a handwritten note. I worked in donor relations before this. I've written thousands of handwritten notes, and they matter. They, they make an impact. Um, a great starting place if you've never less, never tested a gift incentive as part of your virtual event strategy is you know just offering um, a small gift that's related thematically to the event that you're that you're hosting. So if you're doing a lunch and learn, right, maybe it's just a gift card um, for lunch. Maybe you're doing a munch and learn in the afternoon and you want to add a physical item. Um, we've got a bunch of snack packs just on the postal marketplace that you can use. Gift cards are great for instant gratification. Um, physical boxes are really great for driving actual attendance. Every time someone grabs a snack from that box or sees it on the counter at home, they're thinking of you. They're thinking of this event. Um, you can automate the gift distribution for these by adding that magic link to redeem the gift incentive to the your registered email for your webinar. You know, super easy to add this step. And then lastly, uh, this is kind of a two-stepper, but let's say you want to host a coffee tasting experience from our catalog of events for a key group of ABM prospects. What if you tease that event with a low-cost branded item like this dual coffee scoop, coffee bag clip? Um, add that to a custom invite. You're saving money up front, right? Starting with a lower cost send. You're building brand awareness with a branded item. You're building excitement and interest to take that next step and actually register for the event. Um, you could send this gift direct to prospects if you have their addresses. Um, another idea, if I can click here, is to actually leverage this during your in-person conferences and events. So maybe you, you give 10 invites out to each of your reps who are present um, at the event and you know, as they're having conversations with people, instead of saying, oh, hey, like, let's book a meeting. It's, oh, hey, like, we're actually hosting a coffee tasting in two weeks. I'd love to love to see you there. Here's an invite. They have a physical reminder and there's a QR code for them to register right then and there. Super low key, um, low entry next step to continue the conversation. Driving engagement during virtual events. So some virtual events are meant to be a show and tell, um, but others are more effective when people are actually participating. One is hiding Easter eggs in slide decks. Um, so that's something I'm doing today. Jake, is it too small? Was someone able to redeem? I haven't been able on either of the two, that one or the one previously. <laughs> Yeah, I tried on both. I've given up. I've given up. Scan. Oh my gosh. Same. Yeah, I tried them oh on both gosh. and the camera wouldn't scan them. Well, you know, we'll we'll fix that later. You're just teasing us, I see. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. There are some bigger ones, but we'll we'll get them later. I think that just means me and Jake got the first two. <laughs> You're the ones like who's you think. about it. <laughs> okay, so Easter eggs, but make them bigger. Learn from my mistake here. 
Um, some another idea is right during virtual conferences or breakout ses sessions, a huge benefit to leveraging virtual events is measuring your engagement, real time data um, to analyze post event for future events right. Um, this includes analyzing the chat to see who is talking about similar issues, how many people are participating in polls or games or so on. When we add an incentive to drive those engagement metrics, it's promoting engagement during the event and next steps post event. Um, and then the last idea, something I've tested before, but um, using an icebreaker question at the beginning of a webinar to personalize the event follow up with a gift. Um, so asking something like, are you a summer or a fall? Like, do you prefer the summer sunshine or do you prefer fall colors? And then choosing a gift from the postal marketplace um, that is, you know, related to whatever that question that you asked. So in this case, like a candle, right? That is, is evoking those fall feelings or the summer feelings. Uh, it feels extremely personalized to the recipient. Like you were listening to me, like you spent the time to understand like who I am and like what I, what I prefer here. Um, and that helps drive those next steps as well. Lastly, um, driving meetings with thoughtful follow-up. So the desired outcome of your webinar or customer feedback session, discussion, whatever your virtual event was, um, might be like building rapport or driving engagement or booking meetings. Uh, so it's important that you are driving that next step of booking the meeting or, um, you know, driving referral, re referral conversations or retention conversations. Um, so a couple ideas here. Again, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the handwritten thank you note. Um, you can personalize this handwritten by Kiki's on the postal marketplace. Um, be the one person who sends a handwritten note this year. Um, how many of you can count on one hand, right? The number of handwritten notes you've received in the mail this year that are not a wedding thank you note, right? Um, it's really just not done often. It's going to stand out. And then the other idea is just standing out from every other thank you for joining our webinar or sorry we missed you email with a gift to build rapport and incentivize next steps. You can use seasonality, right, to create a collection that's geared towards summer or winter with thoughtful gifts to brighten their day. Um, this is also a great time to leverage those random days of the year. So if, you know, your event falls on a Monday, you want to send follow-up for Taco Tuesday, send them a Taco Taco Bell gift card. It's going to feel timely. It's going to feel relevant. It's going to feel fun. Are those actually handwritten? Um, handwritten by Kiki is actually handwritten. Um, with Paper Plane, you know, we we have the handwritten font available, or we can go through handwritten by Kiki. So yeah, Christina answered there too. Thanks, Christina. Okay, so virtual events are generally cheaper to organize, right, than live events. You can reach more people. You can spend that extra money to uh, potentially drive engagement through a, a personal kit or a custom kit or a kit from the Postal Marketplace. In Engage, we've built an entire events platform to help you drive lasting impressions and engagement during your virtual events. Most of these events include a physical event kit, which will help boost attendance and keep, you know, participants engaged. They're doing something during this event. Um, and our vetted event vendors work with you to create an agenda that works for your needs, um, which gives you value, invaluable time between the cocktails or between the chocolate tasting uh, to get in front of your audience. Most of these events that include a physical kit um, cost between the 75 and 200 uh, price point, and they have minimums around eight to ten, eight to twelve people. Um, and just like with any other gift with the postal marketplace, you're only charged for the number of attendees who register. Um, our field marketer Kiana always likes to say that postal events is the secret weapon of postal. And I know a lot of our our customers are using these events as kind of a top of funnel play. Um, they are effective revenue drivers throughout the rest of the sales funnel as well. Um, so I'm just going to highlight a couple examples, right, that you could think about. Top of funnel, um, 
two different types. You could do, you know, very low barrier to entry trivia shows or comedy shows. Um, you can pair that with a gift that's, you know, like a, like a custom um, drink canister or something for people to enjoy during a comedy show. Um, or you could do an exclusive small event that lends more time for discussion or a company pitch or a demo. Um, choosing events that have those physical kits will help drive attendance and engagement. Uh, we always recommend giving these a seasonal spin as well, just to help them feel more timely. Um, as we move a little bit further down the funnel, um, with warmer leads, maybe you spend less time educating them on your product. It's more time building rapport. Great for re-engaging prospects who are ghosting you, close lost opportunities, moving deals down the funnel quicker. Um, this is an example of a custom kit that we created. Um, so you can you can really create whatever you want with our with our paper plane team. Um, when we think about customer use cases, anything from sip and learn wine tastings for your early adopters to share feedback or intel about the product roadmap, do holiday cooking classes to celebrate, um, you know, upcoming renewals or expansion plays that you want to run with key ABM customer accounts, um, feedback sessions over charcuterie with your customer advisory board or saying thank you for, for everything they've done for your company. Um, so many options here. Um, and when I think about a postal customer that is flying in their virtual event strategy, Big Health is really at the top of the list. Um, Big Health event marketer and postal flyer, Hillary, uh, who's here today, and their BDR team are driving thousands of dollars in pipeline using virtual event. And she was so gracious to sit down with me um, to walk through their playbook. So I'm going to share that with you guys here. A little background on Big Health. Um, they are helping millions of people get back to good mental health. So they have a couple of digital offerings to help uh, reduce stress and increase sleep. Um, and employers and health plans lower their health costs, deliver meaningful clinical output outcomes, and ultimately are improving lives. Um, their audience, as you can expect, is HR, benefits, total rewards, contacts at companies and healthcare providers. And this is Hillary. Hillary handles all things events at Big Health, primarily supporting the sales team and the commercial organization. So when I say they know how to optimize virtual events, here's an example. This was one of their smaller events. Uh, typically, they get between 40 and 60 people registered at these virtual events they, they put on. Um, and at thir at this small event, they had 37 target contacts registered for a cocktail making class that led to 18 new opportunities for the sales team. Round of applause for them. Today, is this one large enough? Is someone getting this? Sneak peek. All right. Good deal. You're probably all Somebody wondering. got it before me, but it did work. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't make it in time, but. Got it. <laughs> How'd they do it? So taking a step back a year ago, the big health marketing and sales teams, um, they were successfully using Postal for more general marketplace gifting use cases. If we think about kind of walking, running, flying, um, I'd say they were probably already in that walking to running stage. They were thinking creatively and strategically about running campaigns, um, using gifts in the marketplace and tying those to in-person events. Um, here's one example, right? Uh, a New York City in-person event, and they were incentivizing folks to, to sign up for that using an offline touch point. Um, in this case, it was a collection. Um, other things they were doing, you know, no strings holiday gifts or self-care kits to cold prospects and customer champions. Um, but they were looking for something a little more creative and alternative ways to further engage prospects um, and drive lead generation efforts. And my field and event marketers on this call probably feel this too, but post-COVID and, and just in general, driving attendance at those in-person networking events can be extremely challenging. Um, like others, Big Health hosts in-person events surrounding the conferences that they attend, a reception or a dinner, even more unique events like cocktail making classes. Um, but there are so many vendors who are all after the same small group of people's time. 
So they decided to test something different and leverage Postal's virtual events as a creative low-key entry point for prospects to learn more about Big Health at a more out-of-the-box virtual experience. They had used a vendor called Liquor Lab previously at their in-person cocktail making classes and had an incredible experience with them. Um, so when they discovered Liquor Lab was on the Postal platform, it was an easy first choice uh, to work with them again on an event play. Um, when tracking the success of their virtual event strategy, they're looking at a couple of key KPIs, right? They're looking at registration rates and then conversion rates to attendance, to meetings set, opportunities created. Um, to a lesser extent, Deals One, their virtual event strategy is primarily a, a top of funnel play, um, but account executives can invite prospects who are in active deal cycles as well if they're looking to re-engage them or build rapport to accelerate that deal to closed one. Um, so the registration strategy playbook, um, the very first step that I want to highlight here is she is extremely intentional in building buy-in um, with the BDR team. You can plan the greatest campaign in the world, but if the people who you're partnering with to execute it aren't bought into the strategy, it will fall flat. Uh, Hillary brings the BDRs into the planning process for each event from the get-go. Um, she's in charge, obviously, of the event logistics, but they work together to craft the copy. Um, she will provide the BDRs with everything they need, the final copy for Postal Magic Links, for invites to send out those one-to-one -one invitations. Um, and then when people register for the event, there's a couple things they do to go above and beyond to limit the drop-off between registration and attendance. And I'm going to highlight two of those here. One is text reminders. So at the point of registration, Big Health is asking for consent to text attendees when they register, which becomes another opportunity for them to personalize touch points and get their name in front of those prospects leading up to the event. Um, super, you know, conversational. Saw your event kit ship today. Looking forward to making cocktails with you. Um, these texts are also great for allowing them to address any shipping issues that come up in the lead up to the event. And then the other thing that I thought was brilliant, um, so there's an option for Postal to add recipients to calendar invites with the Zoom link once they register for the event. Um, Big, Health, Big Health goes a, bit, a step further. Their BDRs are sending personal calendar invites to registrants that they uh, that they get. And Hillary provides the copy for this as well. It's super simple. You know, thanks for registering. Here's the date and time link to join, but it's that personalization of BDR to individual who's attending um, that is just, you know, getting Big Health's name in front of them, getting that primary contact in front of them. Um, and that just becomes a lot, much, a lot easier, right? When you have so many of those personalized touch points to book the meeting afterwards, target prospects are used to seeing your name come up on their phone or on their calendars. Um, so really great strategies that I wanted to share. Um, as far as the event agenda, uh, they keep it light and fun. It's, it's mostly rapport building. Um, the sales, there's usually one or two sales directors on the call who will kick it off introduce the instructor, and then they're off, you know, in this case, maybe making their first cocktail. Um, for most of their event, most of, you know, postal events, there's built in time, right, for you to share whatever you want to share on these events. Um, during the first break between, you know, they make the first cocktail, everyone's going to enjoy that cocktail before making the second one. Um, they'll typically do just a fun, light conversational pitch and an introduction to big health. Um, and then they'll make the second cocktail and that second break is more informal discussion. So it might be related to mental health, right? Cause that's, you know, what big health is all about helping. Um, but you know, it might be more, more fun about like what's on your bucket list or where you're traveling to any personal information they can gather from these discussion questions can then be leveraged in the BDR follow-up. So there's always a BDR or Hilly, Hillary taking copious notes during their event for follow-up. Um, and then the follow-up strategy is pretty simple, right? They're sending personalized follow-ups to book those one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, for attendees, they usually don't offer any other gift. 
Um, typically there's, there's enough engagement, right. To drive those next steps. If people didn't have, didn't attend the event, um, they do test different gift offers to drive those next steps. Um, Hillary and her team walked through this exact playbook, partnering with Liquor Lab again last October for a Poptober Fest event. Um, so creative. They wanted to think even more outside the box for this experience to kind of fit that Poptober Fest theme. So they added artisan popcorn and branded packaging um, to really drive excitement and registration for this event. Does anyone get this one? Is this too small? <laughs> Love the nods. And it worked. Um, these numbers should look pretty familiar to you because I teased them before, but 39 people registered, 17 people attended. Um, super interesting. Of the attendees, they set eight meetings. People who did not attend, they set 12, um, which tells you that they are rocking and rolling with that follow-up. Um, and of those 20 meetings set, 18 of them converted to opportunities. So this is pretty wild, right? 44% attendance rate, 51% converted to, to opportunities. Um, so this is what flying looks like, folks. Um, the secret to big health success. So we talked a lot about what is what is the secret here? Like, what do you think drives the most success? Um, and Hillary, I don't know if you want to come off mute and share your in your own words. Um, otherwise, I can take it too. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to jump in a little bit um, and to answer any specific questions. But yeah, to your point in the slide here, it's the alignment. And to be honest, it's not even a matter of myself planning the event or having it on my radar and then giving it to the BD team. It's really like, how do you guys feel with the with the bandwidth of the other outreach that you're doing to your territories? I, I let them dictate when a good time is to, to schedule these events because really all of the the attendance comes down to the amount of outreach they're able to do. So we work together on ideas for what types of events to do, what timing works the best. Um, and honestly, we even collaborate on other creative ideas. Like even since I spoke to you um, for the information in the case study, um, someone from the BD team had the idea to do a pre-event survey. So we're now sending out surveys to everyone who registers, asking them what do they want to talk about. So we often pose our events as um, like peer-to-peer -peer networking, learn best practices from your peers in the industry on, in our case, um, the, the benefits that you're implied, um, providing to your employees. And so we're giving them the opportunity to let us know the topics that are on their minds. And that way we're able to tailor the conversation to them. So in those networking breaks, we're able to like pull from that information. Um, so really it's such a collaborative effort. They're so creative. It's so fun to, to work on it together. And I think like, I mean, we are, we are truly like one team when it comes to that. Uh, we work really, really closely together. Um, and it's just Postal is like tr absolutely solidified as a staple in our event strategy. Um, but yeah, any, I don't, I think, I hope that answers your question. Oh yeah, totally. And yeah, if anyone looks like Jake might have a question. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a great question, Jake. Um, so I am usually present, um, as she mentioned, so either I or the BD team, usually both of us honestly will take notes just because there is so much organic interaction on the call and we don't want to miss anything for follow-up. Um, I have not had the sales team run one themselves yet. That was on the roadmap when we initially introduced these and we just haven't gotten there yet, but that was what we wanted them to be, but they've just kind of ended up being like a part of my event strategy. So yes, I am always present. Did that answer your question? Let me read it again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it definitely answered. And, and regarding that, like um, not the systems, like do you have a platform to like an event platform for you? Because I'm using personal Zoom links. So I'm just getting bogged down with not being able to schedule at the same time, this, that, and the other. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. So we actually have um, an events team Zoom that we yeah. just use for webinars and things like this. So usually doesn't bog anything down too much. So if you have the opportunity to have your, your company create you a team Zoom account, it, it works really well for us. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? Okay, cool. 
Um, oh, I'm sorry, I meant I didn't come off on mute fast enough. Oh, go are you for guys it. integrating this data like within Salesforce? I know Postal is great at that. How are you actually getting like the feedback loop into the CRM? Yeah, so we have um, we do have our Salesforce integration set up where we just connect it to the event campaign. So I'll have my ops team create a campaign before I launch the event, and then all of the registrants are added to the campaign with the status of registered. And then from the event, we'll usually manually update because the numbers are pretty manageable, you know, 60 and below. We'll then update who attended and who just no-showed or RSVP, let us know they couldn't make it, like some of those things. And, and as you can see in the numbers, we um, are usually really good about getting meetings even with the folks who can't join. So it works out nicely. And you just send an invoice to anybody who got the gift and didn't show up. No, I'm just Honestly. kidding. No. <laughs> No, I was talking with the team last night and we were just laughing about it's incredible how many people will accept these nice expensive event kits with no no intention of ever coming to the meeting. I mean, you have to account for that a little bit, of course, right? But I just, it would be hard for me to accept a nice wine, branded wine, two wine bottles and just be like, they won't be seeing me anytime. <laughs> You're also the one sending it, though. There's many people that do that. So true. Very true. <laughs> Insider. Try. This, no, this is a great event. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks, Katie. I've got a drop for a call. But um, if anyone ever has any further questions, you can always share my contact info. Uh, and thanks so much for, for highlighting Big Health. It was awesome. Thank you, Hillary. Yeah, I will uh, just rock through here. If you have to drop, feel free. Couple three, Kate. Key Keiko takeaways I want to you to walk away with, right? Cross cross functional collaboration is key to the success of these campaigns. Typically, we see marketing owning these plays, but we always see more success when there is a cross functional effort and buy in. So invest that time in building buy in with your ICs. Let them lead as much as they can. Um, your pipeline, your revenue, your retention rates will all thank you for this. Um, Always be testing. So what works for one company might not work for another. What works for one persona might not work for another. Um, it takes time to find your sweet spot. So don't just give up on a whole strategy when one tactic doesn't work. Test different kinds of incentive gifts. Test different kinds of postal events. Test your target audiences that you're trying to reach out to. Um, and then lastly, just because someone doesn't attend your event doesn't always mean they're not interested in the event. So test using you know, a small gift to book the event for non-attendees. Oh, shoot. Yes. Resume share. There we go. Sorry. There are the takeaways for you. <laughs> Thanks for the call out, Michelle. Appreciate it. Um, and then lastly, um, would love to talk about your next campaign. Grab some cookies on me and, and some time to connect. Um, I also just want to Shout out here. Um, if you're interested in hosting an event, you can grab time with me, your CSM. You can email events at postal.com. Um, would love to to chat with you about implementing this as part of your part of your strategy. That's what we got for you today, folks. Thanks for joining us. We will have one more of these um, workshops next month. We haven't decided on a date yet, but I had so much content for our last um, workshop that we're going to do one more kind of focused on, on customer strategies for retention, for upsells, um, for onboarding. So we'll send out the slides and the recording for um, the 6-1 session and for this session probably early next week. So Thanks so much for joining us. If you have any questions, you know, I'll, I'll stick around for a minute. Um, but hope you all have wonderful weekends.